So as you got that I hope you're all doing super well. So today's video, as you can tell from the title, is going to be a hair care video. So it's just dedicated to hair care and it's going to be in a sort of Q&A format. So I will share all my tips and tricks of how I got my hair back to a healthy state again. Very excited. After I um, completely wrecked it by doing balayage, which was about two to three years ago now, I think. But I'm finally happy with how healthy my hair is looking again. So yeah. That's what I'll be sharing today. I've written down all the questions. I've got them listed here. So I will try and get through all of them if I can. I've already crossed out any sort of similar questions or what I'll do is I'll try and bunch them together and I'll be popping Instagram handles for people that ask them who already asked for permission as well. So yeah, let's just jump straight into the video. Okay, so jumping into the first question, I'm going to be reading from my little notebook. I'm going to mix two questions together. So the first one's from Agent Kaiden asking what shampoo I use. And the second one is from Corcal asking for help with hair loss. So I feel like shampoos are the biggest part of your hair care routine. And that's the first thing that you should change. And probably the best thing that you're going to notice, like the biggest difference from. So I'm firstly going to show you what shampoos I use. So I use the Palmer's Olive Oil range. I love Palmer's anyway, I love their moisturisers, but I had no idea that they did shampoos. This was recommended to me by, of course, my mother-in-law-to-be, <laughs> and she absolutely loves it. She said it was all natural, and these have no parabens, no sulfates, no silicones, and no gluten, so they are just pure goodness for your hair. I really like that they have olive oil and black castor oil, which is really good for your hair too, and this is the thing that I've noticed the biggest difference with. As soon as I started using this I noticed like you know when you get like little strands of hair that come out in the shower after conditioner after shampoo I was losing hair every step of my shampoo routine I definitely noticed less hair loss but I was obviously still losing some because hair but anyway I really really like this I think it's given my hair such a nice shine it's definitely from these that I've noticed like the biggest kind of I never used to have this before I know a lot of my friends always tell me I've got shiny hair anyway but nothing like this like okay so leading on from the shampoo to call cow's question about hair loss when you buy shampoos with parabens and sulfates it's just a big money making scheme to be honest because those parabens and sulfates strip your hair of their natural oils which means that your hair is going to get more greasy faster and you're going to be washing it more often which means that you're going to be emptying your shampoo bottle more which means that you're going to be buying more shampoo bottles and in turn you're just making a bunch of money for the company so don't do it just, just don't buy them that is the best advice i can give you than any of these other products changing my shampoo and conditioner without having any of those crappy chemicals in it has been the biggest change and definitely the best thing I've done for my hair. Okay, so I'm not saying that you need to buy this exact range and this particular scent, but anything that's not got those chemicals in it is gonna do your hair a world of good. OGX is another really, really good company that makes shampoos without any of those crappy chemicals, but they are a little bit on the pricier side. And while I'm on that topic, be careful of any drugstore shampoos, even high-end shampoos, that say that they're all natural and that they don't have parabens or they don't have sulfates, but the one that they're not mentioning is always in there. So just read the ingredients, Google them if you don't understand them, but just taking a bit of time to understand the ingredients in the back will make your life so much easier. Okay, so the next question is from Here is an Avocado. I love your Instagram handle, by the way. What's your hair washing routine and what products do you use on your hair? So obviously I've talked about the shampoo and conditioner that I use, so I'm going to talk about my hair washing routine now. I've now trained my hair to last about three to four days before washing. I used to have this terrible problem, which wasn't entirely my fault because my hair would get greasy faster because I was using chemically shampoos. I would wash my hair whenever I would go into the shower. So I normally have a shower almost every day. So yeah, anytime I was in the shower, I'd just be like, well, I'm in here, I may as well wash my hair because <laughs> getting clean and all that, but it's, it's really not good for your hair. So I've now started training my hair for the last month or so to go about three to four days without washing. This is actually my third day hair. Normally I get greasy right at the back here first, but I never thought my hair could look this freshly washed on the third day. But I think this was the first thing I noticed using a shampoo was definitely that I was losing less hair. And secondly, my hair doesn't need to be washed as often because obviously it's a very natural shampoo. And another thing I want to mention is this 
funky tool this is like a silicone brush and it has a little handle for you and you just sort of massage this in when you're using your shampoo or your conditioner and I just sort of go around in small circular motions just to really make sure that that shampoo is getting into my scalp and it's really lifting the buildup that's on my head so this was actually recommended by my friend Lauren and it's amazing because obviously you're not only just cleaning your scalp really well you are stimulating hair growth and final point on the hair washing routine is I always wash my hair twice with the shampoo and then put my conditioner in no matter what your hair type is you should always be washing your hair twice because the first wash you do is to get the build up out of your hair and then the second wash is to make that build up leave your hair completely because when you're washing the first wash, the buildup is just going from your scalp to your roots, it's like very, very close to your roots. That second wash is what's going to push it away from your roots into what is your smoother hair and just wash it out completely. So I always wash it twice and then I put my conditioner on. And conditioner, I only ever put from here onwards. I never put conditioner on my scalp. Okay, so the next question is from Ari, Ari.la, Arilla, Ari.la. I'm really sorry but the question is every product water temperature any techniques you use so I've obviously talked about the products and the techniques using the silicone brush but water temperature I'm glad you asked because a lot of people don't think that water temperature makes a difference but for me personally I wash my hair with warm water so the shampoo and conditioner I always rinse them out with warm water but once I've finished rinsing out my conditioner with warm water I'll do a quick blast of cold water I feel like that's what really locks in the shine for my hair and I've been doing it for as long as I can remember. Okay so we have three questions on frizz. I thought they were quite similar but they've sort of focused on different areas so I'm gonna say them all separately. So the first one's from Roberta B29 which is how can I tackle frizz and keeping curls in shape without overloading on products. Now this is difficult for me because I don't have curly hair myself but my mum and the youngest of my sisters Jessie have really tight curly hair and my mum had actually burnt her curl pattern by constantly straightening her hair so it just ruined her curl pattern completely but she managed to revive it by doing the same technique she was using on my little sister so when they were in the shower and she was sort of washing my sister's hair she would always put loads of conditioner and she did this sort of scrunching method of taking the hair once it's got conditioner on it and like really scrunching it so then the moisture was reaching up here you're stimulating your hair growth yeah that method just meant that every strand of your hair was coated in that condition because normally I feel like everyone puts conditioner on like this to spread it in but with curls what you're doing with that is you're making sure every strand is covered in conditioner and secondly it's really encouraging the sort of curl pattern to spring up if that makes sense so she would do that from wet to dry hair so all the wet products she would put in her hair same scrunching method and when she'd put the products on her hair once they were drying again a scrunching method and then afterwards when she put in any oils again this kind of scrunching method all over her head she would do it in small sections rather than just two big ones she'd take little sections of her hair scrunch them up yeah so i think that scrunching method is the best thing ever because it does make sense to me as well that when you are putting in these products from wet to damp to dry you're the whole time you're just encouraging that kind of curl to form without brushing it or putting any extra products on it which is going to cause that frizz you're just doing a simple action that's going to give you like really nice tight curls without all these little flyaway pieces okay so that leads me on to Murthla Joshi's question I'm sorry sis if I pronounce your first name wrong I'm really sorry um but the question is do's and don'ts for frizz in a humid environment I have two products for you now these two products I never take them out unless I'm going to India or I'm going to Italy because that is the only two places that my hair seems to expand and I don't actually have curly hair I have like wavy slash straight hair but for some reason it really gives me a lot of flyaways and plus I my hair almost feels static so when I went to Rome I had quite short hair and um, when I went with my partner recently my hair was about up to here and I'd curled it so it's kind of like a long bob so especially when my hair is curly like that I use the gloss which is really good this is so lightweight and it feels like an instant refresh for your hair as well this conditioner will just make sure that your hair is really nice and moisturized so you don't get as many flyaway bits and it's not so heavy that it's going to make your hair greasy it is a really really nice thin spritz and the little shimmers in it as well makes your hair look like you've just washed it so I really really like this any type of leave-in conditioner is going to do a world of good especially from fine one with a really fine spray and you can just use it like throughout the day to just freshen up your hair do a little scrunch if your hair's curly 
or do kind of like a pat if your hair's straight and you don't want to ruin the sleekness of your hair okay the second thing this is literally if your hair is just not working whatsoever the humidity is too high it's way too hot and your hair is not being tamed by the leave-in conditioner this is kind of like a serum so it is really thick i only use this when my hair's really really flying all around the place because this is quite weighty so it will weigh your hair down and it's like a really thick serum so you just sort of like massage it into your hands it kind of feels like a jelly and you just smooth in any bits and it will keep your hair there it's kind of like a hairspray serum if that makes sense but this is really really good okay so the last question on frizz is from that underscore desi glow or andrea asking about how to combat frizz tips so i think the main thing is just make sure your hair is moisturized as much as possible so that's from making sure that it's well conditioned making sure that you're not washing it too often so you're not stripping it of those oils especially when your hair is greasy as well i know this is going to sound gross but i have one um hairbrush that i just use for my greasy day so when i come to like the fourth day and my hair is really greasy i'll just get a hairbrush and i will brush my hair from root to tip and what it's doing is taking that essential oils from your hair and coating each little bit of your hair to make sure that all that goodness is getting through all your hair and then I'll just put it into a bun and leave it in for about three to four hours and that is just like a natural way to coat your hair in all this goodness and making the most of those oils that happen in your hair it's going to make sure all of this area is really really well nourished so you won't get as much flyaways here which is I feel like the main part where you see frizz and especially with the ends and stuff leave-in conditioners are great serums or any sort of like gloss shine liquids as well are really really good okay so the next one is from underscore kavita nair and she's asking how to change your hair parting so i recently did this because i had a really deep side parting and the reason why i wanted to change it to a middle parting is because i'd let my deep parting sort of on this side for so long i think i've had it for about two or three years i started to lose hair here so obviously that happens a lot as well when you're used to putting your hair into one hairstyle like when you have it into a ponytail your hair will slowly start receding back or um i used to do a lot of these braids as well that would be really tight and they'd like come down and the rest of my hair would be quite loose but obviously it was pulling so much on my hair that i started to lose hair here and yeah it made me feel very insecure but the best thing to do is to change your parting so i've started having a middle parting now and obviously this hair putting less pressure on that area is just going to mean that, that the hair can start growing back again and especially like these bits i didn't used to have baby hairs this long before but definitely this silicone brush thing has really helped as well because it's stimulating those areas that weren't really stimulated before so all these little hairs are like popping up from everywhere and i think it's definitely bringing my hairline lower down um i don't know if you've seen like my instagram if you go further back my hairline was quite far back because obviously I was so used to putting into a certain hairstyle or I would do like little braids it was putting so much pressure on my hairline that I was just pushing it back so I feel like this is working best for me now it's very relaxed and even when I tie my hair up I will do it in like a very low pony or I'll put a clip up so it's pinned out in the back and all like a low bun I never do like a high ponytail anymore because it just puts too much pressure on my hairline but anyway, I'm going away from the question now. To answer your question, Kavita, basically when I have wet hair, I will hair dry it into, so obviously you're gonna need this early on if your hair's not trained to go that way. Like the middle parting did not wanna happen for me. So what I had to do was train my hair with, whenever it was wet, I would like obviously take a comb, put it in half, and I'd be like, yeah, that's the parting I want. And then I would have to hair dry it and force that hair to sit down there and force this side to sit down here after about i think five or six times of doing that my hair naturally just started to part naturally in the middle so yeah definitely wet hair and a hair dryer i know you shouldn't be using that much heat but five or six times i don't think it's too bad just just use heat protectant okay so i have another question from agent kaiden which is conditioner or coconut oil before taking a shower now coconut oil doesn't work for my hair for some reason i have plenty of cousins that use coconut oil and they'll probably massage it in and they're fine once they wash out but for me it leads to a lot of hair loss i think because it's too heavy for my hair i do have fine to medium hair i don't have really thick hair like my siblings so yeah coconut oil on this hair does not work 
but um, especially when I was younger, my BB or my dad would warm up mustard oil or olive oil and massage that into my hair before putting it into a braid and then I'd wash it out the next morning and that seemed to work wonders for my hair. So I think I definitely react better to lighter oils like olive oil, which is why I stuck to olive oil for the Palmer's range as well. But in terms of doing those kind of oil conditions, I don't really do that anymore. I will get into it again now, especially since, um, again, another product from my mother-in-law <laughs> is this olive oil and this smells so good. I had a look and they don't put perfume in this, but it smells, really really nice like I, I could actually wear this out as perfume it smells incredible so it's got a mix of quite a few oils in there but obviously the largest percentage is of olive oil and you can use this on your face you can use it on your body and your hair so I've started massaging this about I think I've used it three times now or maybe twice so I do this weekly now where I just massage this when my hair needs a wash and I'll properly just like scrunch it in and everything and I will do this once a week but once a fortnight i do a really intensive hair mask like this one this is my favorite one the philip kingsley this was another thing recommended to me by my mother-in-law she buys me a new one of these every year for christmas and um, this scent is actually amazing it's a pomegranate one this smells divine <laughs> so i'm really big on smells as well but yeah this is really really good i think i've gotten halfway through this now so what i do with this one is I actually let my partner do this one for me because this is some heavy stuff like it, it does get tiring to do this one so he will section off my hair dampen it with a little spray bottle and then he'll massage in little bits of this at a time until all my head is covered and then he'll do like a final big massage <laughs> and it, this actually comes with like a shower cap and you so you put your hair up into a bun put the shower cap on and then the heat from your head will really help your scalp absorb all of that goodness even better i do like to leave that on overnight i feel like leaving this in overnight you get the best use out of it because it's not cheap so i would never use this and just put it on for an hour and wash it out i always leave it in overnight because i'm getting the maximum benefits and i don't want to be wasting something like this it's pretty much like throwing money down the drain if you just put this on for an hour and then just wash it out that's why i only do this once a fortnight because i know it's like a big thing for callum to put it into my hair as well because he's literally having to dampen each section to then massage it in it does take about an hour which is really relaxing by the way <sighs> what a guy um but anyway <laughs> so i use this on damp hair and i've actually used this for about i think three years now this was the first thing that i like really changed my hair care routine especially because when i started using this was when i was trying to grow out my balayage and my hair felt like straw it was very very brittle and this definitely helped give my hair that kind of moisture it needed even before i changed my shampoos or started using any other products this was what was really moisturizing my hair and sort of stimulating hair growth to make sure my hair was growing as as fast as it could and was coming out as healthy as it could so if I'm short on time, I will use this one. This is another gift from my mother-in-law. So this one's an apricot cleansing hair treatment. This one I don't put on my scalp. I'm not sure why, even though it's meant to be sort of cleansing for your scalp, but I only ever put this one on my ends because this one you can use on dry hair. So I don't see the point of sort of massaging into my scalp because I'm going to be doing the Philip Kinsley mask once a fortnight. And now I'm also going to be doing this olive oil once a week so I feel like my scalp doesn't need that much moisture I just put this on the ends of my hair to make sure they're like fully coated and they just stay as shiny as possible really but this one's really good if you're on a bit of a time crunch because you don't need to faff about with making your hair damp you can just put it onto dry hair put it up in a bun for like an hour wash it out sorted um all right <laughs> this one's so sweet I actually messaged her privately yesterday as well because I was smiling like an idiot um but <laughs> Laura from Coochie Kate says how is your hair exactly like a princess's I just hope you know how much you've made my day it's still making me smile like that is honestly such a sweet compliment but anyway let me get on to her actual question as well um which is what's a hair product you'd stay away from dry shampoo <laughs> just oh my god dry shampoo wrecked my hair I wish I could insert some old photos um but my hair was so so thick as a kid and i think using dry shampoo through my teens really thinned out my hair so i was convinced that maybe it was stressed through my teen years or maybe it was stressed through university and that's what was thinning out my hair yes i was stupid enough to keep using dry shampoo from my early teens 
up until my last year at university. So I'd been using dry shampoo for almost 10 years of my life. So I'm not surprised it completely thinned out my hair. So I was just convinced that it was stress or it was a bad diet and I was doing something wrong with like products or shampoos or my diet. And I just didn't even think that it was the dry shampoo. And it wasn't until it finally clicked. I think when I moved away from uni and I finally got a flat in Swansea and that's when obviously I had the Philip Kingsley and Callan's mum was introducing me to like lots of different things that I really started reading up on ingredients. And that's when I came across so many articles of other people that I'm not just gonna bash this particular brand, even though this is what gets mentioned the most in articles. I've tried other dry shampoos too. This one is not a drugstore shampoo. This is more of a high-end um, dry shampoo. I still had the same sort of effects. I'd only use this about three, four times when I noticed that it was leaving a heavy buildup on my hair. So I'm not even gonna just bash one particular brand, just dry shampoo in general. It's not good for your hair. If you really, 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 really have to, you can get natural dry shampoos, but even then I feel like the more you can stay away from them, the better. The basic science behind it is that they just leave so much buildup on your hair because obviously that powder is just gonna absorb all the excess oil, but then it just sits there. So when you actually go to wash it out as well, it's not getting completely washed out. So that buildup just keeps building out more. It clogs up the hair follicles, which means that your hair isn't getting the nutrients it needs and it starts to fall out more. That's why so many people have thinned out hair when it comes to using dry shampoos. So I think that's, I haven't had a good experience with dry shampoos and I just feel so angry because I used them for so so long and I think it's just upsetting that it never clicked but I do have an alternative even though I never use dry shampoos anymore I leave I've kept these bottles for some reason this one is almost full like I said because I haven't used it very often um I think I did use it about four times and then just left them aside this one's almost empty but I keep these to remind myself not to buy any more and to stay away from it and i know a lot of people are going to say that when they're in a rush they use it but i do have an alternative which is this got to be volumizing powder now i know this doesn't look like a dry shampoo and i will not use this often maybe like once in a blue moon if i'm caught on a day where i was meant to have a shower i didn't have time to wash my hair and i need to go to work this is amazing so it's a translucent powder which is really good it doesn't matter if you have like dark hair if you have light hair it's not going to show up and because it's volumizing and it's in like a powder it will absorb all that excess oil but it's a lot easier to wash out than dry shampoo so if you really really have to then i would recommend this one okay so the next one is from makeup by narufa and she's asking how do you maintain curl slash waves after the first day so obviously i don't have curly hair <laughs> i feel like that, i've said that so many times but um i do put waves in my hair when i put my hair into two french braids overnight and i just let my hair dry that way and it comes into like gorgeous gorgeous waves to maintain them what i usually do is once i've sort of worn my hair for the day at night time then i'll spritz them with a leave-in conditioner and i'll do a loose braid again just so i'm not disrupting that original curl pattern but then, um, sorry, the wave pattern. So I'm not disrupting the original wave pattern. And all I'm doing with that light braid is just making sure everything stays in place so that when I'm sort of rolling around in my sleep, I'm not creating extra frizz because all that hair is going to be nice and compact. And it's got the leave-in conditioner to keep everything nice and neat as well. So when I open up the braids in the morning, I've still got the original wave pattern and those loose braids have just helped keep everything nice and tight and nice and silky so I don't have as many flyaways. Okay, wow, Arila asked a lot of questions. Um, so this is Ari.la. I'll put the Instagram handles on screen anyway, just so it's easier. Um, first question she asked again is best pre best price friendly products and hidden gems in the market. The first one I'm gonna recommend, I don't know if you've watched my channel for ages, but um I've mentioned this in one of my favourites as well, is the OGX Kukui or Kukui oil. And it's a really small bottle. I don't have it right now, but I've repurchased that bottle seven times it is amazing it smells incredible and it's sort of like a leave-in serum slash oil that you spray onto your ends and it gives your hair the most incredible shine and it really really moisturizes your hair so firstly definitely recommend that one and the second one this is also an ogx one i actually really really love the brand ogx and this is their heat protectant which has argan oil in it again i'm just trying to nourish my hair the most i can this one is definitely the best heat protectant i've used 
it actually feels like I can see less split ends and it, it actually really is working. I don't know if it, whether it's the oil mixture in it as well that's helping with the heat protection, but this one again smells incredible, it works brilliantly and it's not too pricey. Okay, and the final question from Ari.la is also how often do you cut slash trim your hair? So I will trim my hair myself once a month. I know it seems counterproductive that when you're trying to grow your hair out that you're trimming it really often but any sort of split ends you have is just dead weight on your hair and it's going to be pulling your hair down because they are a lot heavier than your healthy hair and it's just going to stop your hair growing as much so I know it does seem counterproductive but trust me having those regular trims really really helps even if you cut off like half an inch or an inch it's not going to make too much of a difference sort of seeing that different hair length but in terms of your hair actually growing it makes a really really big difference so yeah i cut mine once a month and so in the next question we have from soraya she's asking for the best leave-in serums so one of them i've already mentioned which is the ogx kukui oil that one is really good there's a reason why i've repurchased that seven times i really really love that oil the reason why i couldn't get it this time is because it was out of stock in tesco's so thank you tesco's <laughs> but as soon as it comes back in stock i'm definitely getting that one it's really good i've used it for like forever and it lasts a really really long time especially because when you have long hair it's so much easier to just spray it on it's not a very heavy oil slash serum at all you just sort of spray it on smooth it out and your hair doesn't look kind of greasy slash wet it it just looks healthy and shiny so i really really like that and secondly it, it smells amazing the other serum i really like is this garnier ultimate blends one this is a blend of coconut oil and cocoa butter so as I mentioned before, I don't get on well with just coconut oil and really massaging it into my scalp. So with this one, I do just focus it on my ends because I've had bad experiences with coconut oil on my on the roots of my hair. So I only use this on my ends when I think before I'm about to blow dry, I'll mix this with a couple of drops of the cause olive oil, mix them together and just apply it onto the ends of my hair before I blow dry, put on some heat protectant and rinse my hair up, <laughs> blow dry. <laughs> can't speak blow dry my hair out i've been talking so much about hair i'm just getting confused about all the terms so yeah i will put it put all my little bits and bobs on blow dry my hair and then once it's dry i'll put another pump of this on the ends of my hair and it just leaves like an amazing softness to my hair so yeah this one really good okay so these two are quite similar so i'm just going to put them into like the same answer so the first question is from Kishani MUA who asks thoughts on hair vitamins and do you use them? And then the second question is from Joey Louise B. Have you ever used the hair nail tablets to help with hair growth and length? So I used to use biotin when I was a teenager, I think about 15, 16. I was losing a lot of hair because of dry shampoo, but I didn't know that at the time. I just thought it was stress and I needed a little bit extra help to help my hair grow. So I started to take biotin, the kind of little bottles that you can get from Holland and Barrett, and they come in like 5,000 milligram, 10,000 milligram little capsules. Um, you're taking them daily. I took mine for about two months, every single day. And within a week, I started breaking out um, especially on my most oily areas, my forehead, my nose, my chin. And slowly as it went on, my cheeks started breaking out. I started getting spots on my neck and other soft areas like the inside of my elbow, inside um, of my knee, all along the inner, inner part of my thigh. I just had spots everywhere. I was pretty sure I had chicken pox. It was absolutely terrible. But again, it just didn't click in the first month that it was happening because of these tablets i just thought teenagers i'm acne prone and <laughs> that's what it must be so obviously i went to the doctors and again they thought maybe i had an allergic reaction but then i mentioned that i was on biotin tablets and that's the only thing that had changed recently and straight away he identified the problem and he said that those tablets are only meant for people that have a serious deficiency in biotin because our daily recommended amount is just 2.5 milligrams of biotin and these tablets are marketed at 5,000 milligrams to 10,000 milligrams so yeah it it was a very amateur mistake so since then I've kept very far away from hair vitamins so if I don't need them and if you don't need them, there's no need to dabble into them. So I know lots of people do like to experiment with collagen tablets and biotin tablets. But if you don't need them, there's no need to put your body under that much stress for something that you don't necessarily need. That is 
for patients that have a serious deficiency in biotin or they have serious serious hair loss so ugh, stumbling <laughs> so like now i would say my hair is quite thin like that's just half of my hair and i, I feel like that's quite thin but that's no need for me to have biotin tablets. I can try and fix that again by constantly um, stimulating my hair follicles to make sure that more hairs will come out from one follicle. So like it slowly thickens over time rather than going down the tablet route. So my personal opinion on vitamins and even just the um, sugar bear gummies, if you look at the amount of articles of people that had broke out, even though they're drinking maybe like a gallon of water a day, so they were flushing out as much toxins as possible out of their body, it still broke them out. It gave them really, really bad skin, as well as other conditions that were showing up. Again, like I mentioned, I had on the inside of my arm. I think it really flared up my eczema because of that as well. So yeah, that's, that's my opinion on <laughs> vitamins and hair supplements don't use them unless you absolutely need them and even then go for a doctor ask for their opinion ask for a second opinion there's no need to self-medicate on things like that especially when there's so many other products that could help you out and that you could try out before you go into something quite as extreme as that and i think that's the problem people don't realize just how big of a jump it is to take hair vitamins without trying everything else so obviously I just want to do a quick mention that your diet is going to play a really big part in your hair health as well as the amount of water that you intake but obviously all these products that I've mentioned is just stuff that's really worked for me and helped me go from my very very damaged hair. I don't know if I've already mentioned but when I had the balayage they had to bleach my hair three times because obviously my hair is really really dark and so to get it to that kind of colour that I wanted they had to bleach it three times and it completely ruin my hair i had to wait for it to fully grow out for me to do a big chop just to cut all that damaged hair off there was no point of me even dying over it it was just dead weight that was gonna weigh down my healthy hair and impact the growth i was having of my healthy hair so i just had to completely cut it off so obviously with diet i think you, that's where you can make up for anything if you are thinking of taking any vitamins or supplements you can definitely change your diet first and see how that um, works for you. So obviously with, with biotin, for example, it's naturally occurring in avocados, bananas, like leafy greens. Just make sure it's stuff that you can eat raw so that you're not killing the amount of bi biotin that's in there. So bananas, avocados and leafy greens like in salads is amazing. Um, it is in cauliflower as well, but obviously it is hard to eat cauliflower raw. So I tend to focus on the, the three beforehand. <laughs> Well, that's it. Now we've come to the end of the video. I just want to say a big thank you to everyone that asked the questions on Instagram. I hoped to have answered them well for you. But yeah, this was a lot of fun to film and it makes me so happy to be able to share this hair knowledge because I have researched it so much. And yeah, I think it's something that I'm really, really interested in. So I can't wait to keep carrying on this journey. But yeah, so um, please leave me a comment if you have any other questions and I'll try and answer them the best I can. I'll also leave a list of all the products in the description box just in the order that I mentioned them or I'll put them in the order of what question they cover if that's easier. And yeah, so that is it for today. I really, really hope you enjoyed the video and please don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. But other than that, I will see you in the next video. Bye!